If you have an idea for an app or a SaaS business and you think the only thing holding you back from success is money, I need you to stop right now and listen to Jason Calacanis and what he has to say. If you don't know about Jason Calacanis, he's a world-renowned American venture capitalist. He's invested in the biggest companies in the world extremely early like Uber, Calm, Robin Hood, Trello, Superhuman, and much, much more. Jason has something extremely important to say that I want to highlight to any of you out there who have ideas for apps or web-based businesses and you think money's the only thing holding you back. Let's jump in and listen exactly to what Jason has to say. 100% right. And I've gotten in my later years as we run like Founder University and these programs when people are applying and we only accept 10% into the programs and then only invest in 10% of those. So net net, like less than 1% get funded. You know, I'll ask them, they're like, oh, can you give us money so I can get a co-founder? And I'm like, you know what? You failed the first test of being an entrepreneur. He says, if you need money to convince somebody to join you, then you failed the first test of entrepreneurship. And that's a pretty bold statement to make because businesses require capital to operate. You need working capital and you might need an initial outlay or an initial investment to get your business off the ground. So let's figure out more about what Jason is saying here. You know, the first test of being an entrepreneur is can you convince two or three people to go on this crazy journey with you because it's important and without money? And, you know, people expect, oh, you're going to just give them the money because they have an interesting idea. And then I asked them, what's your skill? What do you do at the startup? Do you sell the product? Do you build the product? And a lot of people do not have the wherewithal to add a skill that the world needs, being a developer, a UX designer, a salesperson, whatever it is, right? They don't have any skill. Okay, let me stop right there because he mentions a couple things. Number one is being able to attract people. Okay, the same way you, you might need to attract customers for your product, you'll also need to attract people for your company. This is called talent attraction and it's a major, it's a billion dollar problem that even the biggest companies are struggling to solve. You as a founder need to be able to recruit people to get behind you, to rally around your vision because you at the end of the day are the leader. If you're going after a business where you want to be a solopreneur, you want to do things on your own, I'm sorry to tell you, but that shit doesn't work. It does not work. There's a lot of hype around solopreneurship. In my honest experience, you have to be willing to work in teams because even if you're a solopreneur, those solopreneurs still have virtual assistants, executive assistants, teams of contractors who are getting work done for them. You still have to be a leader and you have to understand how to get people to rally behind you. It doesn't matter who it is, okay? You need to be able to put your skin in the game, take that initial risk, and then watch as people come to you because people respect risk takers. And that's why entrepreneurs take the biggest risk. They make the least amount of money. Their employees get paid first. Their teammates get paid first. They get paid last because people rally around the one who takes the risk. And that's what Jason Calacanis is talking about here. Like, You need to attract people and build stuff yourself or... Uh, take the leap of faith so that you can get people to rally behind you here. The second thing he's saying is skills, okay? You need to acquire skills to run a startup. You need to acquire skills to bring your idea off the ground. Let's talk, let's see exactly what he's saying about skills. And then they also have no ability to convince somebody else with skills to start a company. You, if, you, if you can't have marketable, important skills yourself that you taught yourself on your own, through sheer force of motivation and will and opening up YouTube, which really isn't that hard, people. Like anybody can learn to code, to be a UX designer, to be a salesperson. All this shit is on some online course, some book, some YouTube video, some podcast. So just learn some marketable skills that a store up needs. And if you can't do that, you shouldn't be a founder. 100% you should not be a founder if you're not ready to roll up your sleeves. If you don't have your own self-motivation to get on YouTube for an hour, two hours a day and Google stuff, how to build an app, how to design UI, Figma for beginners. And not just that, not just being a consumer of YouTube, but actually cracking open Figma, cracking open Flutterflow, cracking open Webflow, launching a website, connecting a domain name. If these aren't things you're doing, then you don't have what it takes to build your own product, your own business. You don't have what it takes to build something and then ask a customer to trade you money for your value that you're trying to create. You don't have what it takes. So 
If you are not just watching YouTube all day long and just observing people actually doing stuff, if you're doing that for entertainment, that's totally cool. If that's why you're watching this video, that's totally cool. More power to you. I'm glad I'm entertaining you. But if you are trying to take action and actually do something, just take a second right now. Just stop what you're doing. Pause the video. Are you happy with your job? Have you made the progress that you wanted to bring your app idea to life, your web-based business idea to life? Are you telling your friends and family consistently that I'm launching something, I'm working on it, it's coming along. But reality, what you're doing is you go back to the computer at night and you just watch other people do it on YouTube. If that's you, Jason's exactly who you're talking about. You're probably trying to think about, I need to raise money, I need 100K, I need 50,000, I need to quit my job, I need to start a YouTube channel, I need to build a community. Um, All these things cost money, I can't do it. Well, that's not it. That's absolutely not it. You're not gonna do it on your own. And I'm a big believer you need a team. Every time I've been successful, it's been with a team. I've built dozens of apps, dozens of companies, and I've done it on my own. Never works out. I generate a few hundred bucks like I did with Virely. I can't really get Virely off the ground to go farther than $2,000. I built a ton of smaller projects like NBA Top Shot, did an NFT project, did my own sports ticketing stuff. I flipped watches, I flipped phones. I've tried to do all those stuff on my own. I've tried to build companies on my own. It just doesn't work out. Once you learn how to take the leap of faith and learn skills yourself and prove to the world that, oh my God, this person, Aleem, or this entrepreneur, this founder is a magnet of skills, a magnet of value. They are going to come to you. You need to become addicted to learning new skills, breaking things, trying a lot of uh, different tools and technologies. And this is the way that you will attract money, customers, and respect. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have respect as an entrepreneur, your customers are going to walk all over you and you're never going to get anything done because you don't respect yourself enough to sit down and actually break shit and actually build something that the world wants. Okay. So I'm absolutely all in on Jason's mindset here. It's out there. You can learn how to code. You can learn how to build apps. You can learn design. You can launch a website. There's so many tools on the internet. I, as a full-time founder of a VC-backed company, I spend probably an hour a day on YouTube learning new things. I watch Harvard Business Study reviews. I watch sales gurus who know how to sell. I'm looking at Flutterflow. I'm looking at Flutter. I'm looking at app development. I'm looking at entrepreneurship. I'm listening to um, you know, professors talking about first principles thinking. I'm constantly learning and stressing myself on topics I know nothing about. That's what you have to do as a startup founder, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who wants to be successful in life. So uh, if you think money's stopping you, that's absolutely not it. What I see that works best is an entrepreneur who puts their skin in the game, learns how to build something themselves, right? Puts an app out there in the market and now they have traction. Okay, and traction is what investors like Chamath and what Jason and angel investors and private equity firms, they're looking for business traction. So now that you put your app out there, it's time to operate the app and become a real operator, right? How many users do you have? What's the conversion rate from downloads to signups, signups to paying customers? How much GMV, gross merchandise volume, are you generating through your platform? You might have to hire people to actually generate that volume. Even if it's a few hundred dollars, that is significantly enough to raise money. If you build an app, you can generate a few hundred dollars worth of, excuse me, GMV, which is gross merchandise value, or you can just demonstrate that, hey, this app works. There are people out there using it and achieving value. You built the app yourself and saved $50,000, $80,000. You prove to the world that you're an operator because you know how to actually operationalize a business, right? If I put a lemonade stand out on the road, people aren't just gonna come to me. I gotta go wave a sign. I gotta make the lemonade. I gotta make sure that my price is profitable, that the lemons and the water and my time is all being accounted for. That's operations, right? That's what investors wanna see, not money. Because if you have $80,000, that doesn't change the fact that you don't know how to operate. That doesn't change the fact that you don't know how to build an app. That doesn't change the fact that you know how to penetrate a market and gather a community or uh, recruit talent. Those are the four things that you absolutely need to run a company or to even build a product, right? So I'm all in with Jason here. I think this is absolutely massive and there's been no better time for him to make this statement because the barrier of entry to be building profitable app businesses is at its all time low. If you're with me on this journey about bringing app ideas to life, bringing web-based businesses to life, internet entrepreneurship, startups, AI technology, make sure you like, subscribe and follow, leave a comment. 
I'm all about this stuff. I'm all in. My name is Ambitious Salim. I'll see you in another video.